previously on Exploring the Depths of the Utah. We are still discovering new layers in this beautiful state of Utah. With each dusty mile and the relentless desert heat, we press on, willing and ready for the next adventure to come our way. If you're new to the channel, welcome aboard. We're glad to have you. And for those returning, we are gonna pick up right where we left off in the last episode. Hey, that was pretty epic, but getting moose back out of here is gonna be fun. What an epic campsite. We really hate to leave this spot, but we're curious about what's ahead. Playground? Yeah. A playground in the desert. This girl was way overdue for a playground. And what better playground than a big rock in the middle of the desert? And you gotta think, from where we're from, it is 1,700 miles just to get to Utah. So it's well deserved and she's gonna have her rock top. Also, I'm just glad we found this earlier in the day because as you'll see later, it gets up to 111 degrees. It was brutal. Oh, 
getting down is easy. It's just, it's that way. <laughs> Which way do we come up? We pointed our way towards Moab as we let the 6.2 liter sing the song of her people. You're entering the habitat of the Holy desert bighorn. Holy sheep. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> Gemini Bridges would ultimately end up being one of my favorite trails. The views were endless, and it was just technical enough to keep it interesting. Yes, that is 111 degrees, and one of the reasons you don't see any drone footage at the moment, the drone can only handle up to 104. We kept our eyes open the entire time for bighorn sheep, but not one, not a single one. The only thing we seen was a scraggly little mountain goat. So instead of getting the three billy goats gruff, we got the one billy goat rough, because that's what he looked. 
At least I can't blame him, I guess. In 111 degrees, I'd look the same. Yeah, he's got a shady spot. Again, it was just so brutally hot that day, we just did not want out of the vehicle. We stayed kind of local to Moab and hit a couple more trails. We should have quit with Gemini Bridges that day, but it would have been so miserable trying to set up camp that early. We just wanted that sun to go down. So we kept driving, kept driving, probably should have turned back. Kind of scary from this vantage point. It is not scary. <laughs> There, there, there's nothing wrong with that. It's normal. <laughs> you can see how low the sun is getting by the shadows on the rock. And you think that would be enough of a sign to maybe tell me, hey, get out of this trail, maybe go find camp. But once we seen this sign, we definitely should have turned around instead of trying to push forward. Yep, by the time we decided to turn around, it was too late. We were gonna have to crawl our way out of here in the dark and then have to go find camp. That was a crazy adventure. We ended up not finding camp till like 12 or 1 that morning. The next day, we were in no rush to get moving. We took our time and just relaxed, enjoyed the sights along the way. You tell me how they got up there to do that. Tonight's camp nestled right in the heart of Goblin Valley, quite possibly the closest thing to Mars we'll ever experience. Join us next time as we wake up among the goblins, we explore an old ghost town full of surprises and secrets, and trek across this beautiful state of Utah, overlanding as a family. If you're not yet subscribed to the channel, make sure to do so, and tap that notification bell so you don't miss out on an upload. Take care, and we'll catch you on the next episode. <laughs>